these compounds are actually quite exciting. Uh, we know that uh, from the coagulation cascade, the factor 11 and its activated form factor 11A are um, involved in thrombus propagation and pathologic thrombus formation, but have a lesser subsidiary role in hemostasis. Thus, the hypothesis is that through factor 11A inhibition, we can prevent thromboembolic complications uh, or thromboembolic events uh, by blocking clot propagation to either occlude a vessel or then create a mobile thrombus that can then embolize uh, without resulting in a major increase um, in large bleeds or, or clinically relevant bleeds. Um, and there is uh, various levels of consistent evidence to support uh, this hypothesis. Um, the first, uh, actually, the, the whole factor 11 um, story or the journey, scientific journey that has led to these ongoing randomized trials uh, was an observation in patients who have inherent factor 11 deficiency or, or a rare form of hemophilia called hemophilia C. Um, and observation in these patients is that they're at a lower risk of ischemic stroke and venous thromboembolism relative to the general population without an increased risk of major spontaneous bleeds. Uh, they're often diagnosed um, at the time of surgery and in involving um, certain tissues such as the oral or nasal mucosa or a urino, uh, gender, um, genital urinary tract, rather, um, and um, and sometimes due to excess uh, bleeding uh, or menorrhagia uh, during menses. Um, however, they don't have major bleedings in the context of spontaneous ICH, for instance, or major GI bleeds. Um, then, uh, to kind of confirm these findings, Mendelian randomization analyses have demonstrated an association with uh, genetically determined elevated levels of factor 11 and venous thromboembolism, as well as ischemic stroke, um, but not an association with major bleeding. Um, so this seems to confirm this er uh, original clinical observation in patients with hemophilia C. Subsequent to this has been uh, preclinical animal studies that have shown that um, you do not increase bleeding times uh, when um, inhibiting factor 11, uh, even if, if factor 11 is inhibited on top of dual antiplatelet therapy uh, use, or even more recently in a model where um, factor 11 inhibition uh, occurred uh, it, following thrombolysis. Um, so what's really exciting um, about these compounds is the various levels of consistent uh, data before they even got into clinical trials, uh, which, which increases the likelihood that clinical trials will provide meaningful positive results. Um, now we have a number of phase two trials that have looked at these uh, agents um, in uh, total knee arthroplasty patients and, and, and with the um, goal of preventing venous thromboembolism. Um, as well as in patients with atrial fibrillation and, and for secondary stroke prevention in patients with non-cardiobolic ischemic stroke. And overall, the results have been consistent with the hypothesis um, of our ability to uncouple pathologic thrombus formation from hemostasis uh, with these agents. Um, in particular, in patients with venous thromboembolism, uh, one particular agent, melvexian, which is a direct uh, inhibitor factor 11A and an oral compound was shown to prevent venous thromboembolism more effectively than enoxaparin um, without uh, increased risk of bleeding, similarly low and numerically less bleeding. Uh, in patients with atrial fibrillation, um, the use of asindexian, which is another oral direct uh, small molecule inhibitor factor 11A, led to less bleeding than the um, current oral anticoagulant that has the greatest safety perception, that's a Pixaban. So we had, so there was less, at least significant less bleeding with asindexin versus a Pixaban in patients with AF. And, and this is quite uh, impressive because previously um, trials comparing a Pixaban to aspirin uh, in patients with AF or ESIS more recently with, through the Arcadia trial have not shown any increased risk of bleeding with apixaban versus aspirin in ischemic stroke patients. And now we're seeing that S-indexin has even less bleeding than apixaban. Indirect comparisons, which are um, 
fraught with limitations and pitfalls. So I think we should look at this data with a grain of salt, but, but really exciting um, and confirm, I think, a proof of concept data that, that we can have more a safer uh, anticoagulation uh, with these agents. And on the efficacy side, we've seen already greater efficacy with factor 11 inhibition uh, for venous thromboembolism. Now for uh, stroke prevention, uh, there was two phase two trials that were conducted. There was the um, Pacific Stroke Trial uh, that uh, we were involved with, and then our colleague at PHRI was separately leading the axiomatic SSP study. Um, these studies were, compa were comparing uh, factor 11A inhibition with asindexian and melvexian, uh, respectively. And, and overall, uh, consistent um, results between these two trials. And I think the overall theme of the factor 11 uh, story is that the, the overwhelming consistency across various levels of evidence. Um, and what we've seen in Pacific Stroke in particular was that the use of asyndexian when you, versus placebo uh, on top of background antiplatelet therapy laid to um, no um, dose-dependent response for a primary outcome which was the composite of symptomatic ischemic stroke and covert brain infarction. But that null finding seems to have been driven by a complete lack of response um, on covert brain infarction, uh, which accounted for 75% of our composite primary outcome. Um, there is a reason for that we believe this was the case. The majority of these were covert brain infarcts due to cerebral small vessel disease. And there was already Mendelian randomization analyses that suggested that um, there was no association between small vessel occlusive uh, disease-related strokes and factor 11 levels. Um, so again, there is consistency there with uh, some of the pre-phase two trial data. Um, however, when we uh, looked at the uh, composite exploratory outcome of ischemic stroke and TIA, a total study duration of 10 and a half months, roughly, what we found was a suggestion of a dose-dependent response um, with asyndexian treatment uh, with the greatest response seen at the 50 milligram daily dose. Um, the other two doses were 10 and 20 milligrams daily. And in particular, on the basis of a previous trial uh, that was called the COMPASS trial, uh, where patients with advanced systemic atherosclerotic disease were randomized to uh, dual pathway inhibition with a factor 10A inhibitor, rivaroxaban, at a vascular dose of 2.5 milligrams twice daily plus aspirin versus um, aspirin monotherapy, um, where there was a substantial reduction of 50% relative risk reduction in ischemic stroke. We were very interested in looking at subgroup analysis of patients who entered the Pacific Stroke trial with uh, baseline atherosclerotic disease. We did this in two ways. We looked at patients who met TOST criteria for large artery atherosclerotic uh, related strokes, as well as any degree of atherosclerotic disease seen on vascular imaging involving the uh, aortic arch, um, cervical arteries, and intracranial arteries. And, and interestingly, we saw robust um, effect sizes of 50 to 60% relative risk reduction uh, relative to placebo with 50 milligrams daily of asyndexian uh, for the composite outcome of ischemic stroke and TIA. Um, at the same time, uh, the uh, axiomatic as a speed trial was, uh, was being conducted and they specifically um, uh, mandated that in terms of eligibility of their trial, that to exclude patients with small vessel occlusive disease related strokes and to ensure that there was some degree of atherosclerotic disease protruding into the vessel lumen as part of uh, entry. And in that study, again, they, they suggested largely a dose dependent response uh, to melvexian, although there was a paradoxical response that we don't quite understand at the very highest dose of 100 milligrams twice daily. Um, and um, that really the, the, the results um, show that the, although there was an effect on ischemic stroke, there was really no effect on covert brain infarction. Um, so on the basis of uh, the totality of the evidence to date, um, we're very uh, excited to be conducting the oceanic stroke trial, uh, which is looking at um, asyndexian 50 milligrams daily versus placebo on top of background antiplatelet treatment in patients with non-cardiobolic ischemic stroke who are enriched for baseline atherosclerotic disease. 
Um, and we'll be enrolling um, over 9,000 patients uh, from 700 sites in over 30 countries. So it's a large global effort to be able to answer this question. And, and the PI for this trial is my colleague, Mike Sharma, and I'm, I'm leading the study with him as co-PI. Uh, at the same time, our, there was the um, Librexia stroke study is, is looking at a similar trial design uh, with the use of another agent, Melvexian, that we discussed earlier. So, so I think a lot of um, excitement about the potential uh, and the consistency of data that, that it supports uh, this new paradigm, and, and hopefully we will be able to prove it through the conduct of these phase three trials.